back for day 22 of the 100 horror films in 31 days. Uh, obviously, I've passed 100 films, as I've talked about before, but I'm going to go as much, long as I can at the same pace. I think, um, unfortunately, yesterday I was a little slow. I watched some college football and then um, don't expect much on Sunday either since you know, NFL. But I did get four films in yesterday. First up is the classic Curse of the Werewolf, 1961 Hammer film. Oliver Reed's portrayal of the Wolfman is, to me, well, I mean, it may be sacrilegious, but I think he's the best portrayal of the Wolfman. As much as I love Lon Chaney, when I got him, got him hanging up on my wall, Oliver Reed, the intensity and the menace that he presented in the role, I just think he did a fantastic job. And I think that there's a uncanny resemblance to Benicio Del Toro. When you look at Oliver Reed and then look at the Wolfman remake Universal did, you got to look at these two films and say, I wonder if Benicio took more from this film <clears throat> and his portrayal than, say, Lon Chaney. I mean, Lon Chaney is kind of like Bela Lugosi. He made, the, he made the Wolfman his own. He was first. You got to respect that, and I do. Um, but just like with Dracula and Christopher Lee, uh, you know, even though Lon was first, I think this is the guy, Oliver Reed's portrayal. Oliver Reed's a hell of an actor. He really is. I mean, if you haven't seen the movie The Devils, you need to see that. Uh, that and this portrayal, I just think, is the best. Now, a lot of people criticize this film for being too slow. And I don't think that's a fair assessment because it's really a spanning, epic historical discussion about the origins of becoming a wolf. Uh, it's based on a book, a 1933 book, The Werewolf of Paris. So it follows the book quite closely. And it's in three acts. The first act is the origins of the werewolf with the, his mother, uh, Yvonne Romaine, who's just gorgeous. You know, she she basically gets raped in a castle by a beggar that's been living in the castle as an animal essentially for years. And then Act Two is, of course, uh, his childhood years and his development as a wolf. And then the third act, of course, is the adulthood and the final act with him getting uh, killed. So this uh, this Blu-ray is a European Blu-ray steelbook that I bought. It's a limited. I didn't know that. It's a limited. I don't know if this stuff's even these. I don't know if this is just marketing or what, but it is limited to 3,000 copies. It would have been a nice steel book, except when it came, the mailman decided to, it came dented, but what can you do? I'm not a big fan of steel books in general, but I love this movie, and it's the only way at that time that I could got a, um, a Blu-ray edition of this film. It's also got a bunch of lobby cards, which are kind of cool. But I think you're... Uh, your boy Oliver Reed here looks a hell of a lot like Benicio Del Toro, in my opinion. Now, the real mystery about this is why did Hammer not make the werewolf a series? I mean, they saw fit to do Frankenstein and Dracula, which obviously those are the two preeminent uh, horror cycle films, but uh, how do you how do you explain the mummy over the werewolf? I mean, I love the mummy, but man, we, we could, they could have done as great as this film was. They could have they could have really done a great spinoff of a series of films just as good, I think, as Dracula Frankenstein based on the werewolf. I don't know. But the werewolf is my favorite character, and he just seems to always. Uh, play second fiddle to Dracula and Frankenstein, but 
it is. Even in the Universal, you think about it. I mean, he, he had one title. I, I think he was... Lon Chaney played the werewolf, wolf man a bunch of times, but he wasn't the title leading character. I mean, even though, like, Frankenstein meets the wolf man, pretty much was a wolf man movie. I mean, Frankenstein directly just got more more movies out of their character than the werewolf did. But at any rate, my favorite werewolf movie, I would say this is my number one of all Wolfman movies. Next up, I watched It. And this was kind of an interesting story. So I put this DVD, I've been kind of debating about whether to buy the Blu-ray upgrade because there's the, the same special features so all you're going to get is uh, a better quality picture and I'm not a huge I mean I saw this when I was I mean last time I saw this was probably on the, on TV back in the 80s when it came out uh, but I or the 90s whenever that whenever that was but it I, I just was not it's okay. I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm just not a Stephen King nut. Uh, so I thought, well, I'll just check, watch the DVD. So I watched the first 90 minutes. This is a three-hour movie, by the way. Part one is 90 minutes, and then I looked, and it's over. And it's like I was looking at this, the the menu. There's no part two, and I looked at the back of it, and it's like 187 minutes. It says. I said, well, maybe I get this thing, I got shafted or something, because, um, you know, when you look at this, it's like a one-sided disc. I mean, that looks blank. So, I thought, well, this is screwed up. So, I went out to Best Buy, like an idiot, and bought the Blu-ray for, you know, that was nine bucks. I said, well, I want to see part two. Uh and then I got home only to realize that if you flip the disc over on this stupid thing, it's it's got part two on here. So anyway, I upgraded. I went back and watched a little part one and then part two. It's a three hour and seven minute uh, investment of time. The second part is just, they could have just gotten rid of almost that whole 90 minutes and just condensed it to one hundred minute movie it had been much better uh, way way too long just there's not enough story here to 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 justify three hours um, I understand I mean the film is really to me a, a film about growing up growing up as a kid with the, kind of the, the fears that you grew up with and typical childhood bullying and fears and and overcoming those obstacles into into adulthood um, I mean, it's that's more the storyline than it is about Pennywise, in my opinion. Pennywise is just a symbol of your childhood fears, but the second part, particularly the ending, it just kind of kills it. It's just the cheesy CGI horrible ending, and um, the first ninety minutes are probably worth the price of admission. John Ritter's good in this. You got a, you got a, a also you got. Um, John Boy Walton was in this, so I, I don't know. I'll get around to the commentary. The only other special feature is a commentary. <laughs> then I watched um, a 1925 movie on YouTube, Wolf Blood, which is the f only surviving. It's the first werewolf film, the only surviving first werewolf film, because there was another werewolf film making, made in 1913, but there's no apparently no surviving prints of it. So Wolf Blood, 1925, you can watch it on YouTube if you're interested, is uh, a story about a, 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 log, a, a guy that works in the logging industry as a lumberjack. <clears throat> he gets, essentially, he gets into a fight with a couple of his lumberjack buddies, they uh, they crown him with a brick or something, and he ends up having to get a transfusion. The doctor ends up using wolf blood as the transfusion, and he starts to have strange visions. And uh, kind of, it's obviously it's made in 1925. There is no wolf man. 
there is no makeup associated with the Wolfman. It's more of a, just an implied imagery and imagination type thing. Uh, it, luckily, it was only an hour long, but uh, you know the concept of the Wolfman was there, but it was not a horror movie per se. So anyway, I watched that, and then I watched uh, I this I've never seen Scream Four. I've watched all the others, and I finally got around to watching Scream Four. This is Wes Craven's. I don't know if this is his last movie. Maybe it's close to his last movie. Twenty Eleven. This was directed. Um. Uh, it's it's good, uh, but it's just the same storyline as the other three, in my opinion. Just uh, it's a variant of that story. Um, but I, you know, it's an entertaining hour and fifty minutes. I think these things run a little too long for the story, but uh, I I enjoyed it. Okay, it's a six out of ten. There's a um, this has a Blu-ray and DVD combo scream four but i think it's better than scream three um but it's no great shakes it was okay say if you've seen scream one and two you've seen scream four as far as i'm concerned <clears throat> okay well that's it for day 22 i will be back i do have a large blu-ray update that i need to record and then um tomorrow's gonna be Pretty short, I think. So, and then Monday, I should pick up some speed again and knock out five of them. So, thanks for watching.